الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين اللهم اجعلنا منهم ومن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر آمين يا رب العالمين ثم أما بعد We're continuing from where we left off uh, There is one important point about the, um, the miracle of the Quran that I failed to mention that should not skip our notice when Allah Azza wa Jal says وَمِن شَرِّ النَّفَّاثَاتِ فِي الْعُقَدِ when the ayah was revealed, no one knew that there were people in secret blowing knots and doing this kind of casting of magic. As I told you, the Messenger himself, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was keeping this secret. He did not tell the Sahaba or anything like this. It wasn't publicly known. And of course, these people who do this, do this in the dark of the night in secrecy. So, now being this specific, not just even saying, you know, min sharri sahara from the evil of sorcerers or magicians. That would have been general. But to specifically pinpoint what exact ritual they were doing, down to the actual act that they were doing it, the purpose of that is, the and remember the surah began قُلْ So he has to declare this out loud. When he declares this out loud, even the Sahara, these magicians, this Labid ibn Asim and his family, they hear this too. And they wonder, we do magic to try to harm him. What did he use to get this news? How did he get this information that we're doing, you know, this nafath fil uqad? They have, he has no way of knowing this except by wahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this in and of itself, this kind of ikhbar, you know, to, to let the people know that he has a source of knowledge higher than theirs. They call on their source of knowledge, which is magic, but the messenger has been given the highest source of knowledge, and it outdoes theirs, even the way they're called out in their secret meeting. So that's one thing I wanted to bring to your attention. The second, is, I, I promised you to share with you the parable. I found it very beautiful actually. Shaykh Muhammad Qasim Nanudwi uh, is uh, recorded by Shaykh uh, Shabir Ahmad Uthmani in Tafsir Uthmani, it's in Urdu. His commentary on Surah Al-Falaq, he comments the notes he took himself from the Shaykh. And he says, he gives a parable explaining Surah Al-Falaq and the different kinds of harms it protects us from. He says it's like Allah wants us to think of ourselves like the plant that a gardener takes care of. A gardener is, is planting a plant in the ground and it has different problems that it has to protect itself from. Number one, there are animals like you know a goat or a lamb or something that wants to graze on that plant, it wants to chew on it. Now the, the goat or whatever animal it may be, or even a bug uh, or a bird, it does, it's not the enemy of the farmer. It's only doing that because that's in its nature. Allah created it and part of that creation is it's going to eat a plant or it's going to chew on it. This is part of the manifestation of bin sharri ma khalaq. There are things Allah created and they can cause you damage not because they're evil but because that's what they do. You know, a, a shark or a lion or whatever is gonna do what it does. And it's not because it's evil, it's just it's acting out in accordance with its nature. So in the way Allah created things naturally, there's the potential for you receiving harm just in the natural order of things. And so you have to ask Allah for protection from them. But that's not the only kind of protection He seeks. So he fences the plant around so the, you know, the goat doesn't come by and chews it up. But the next thing is he has to plant the plant in a place where it gets plenty of sun, it gets plenty of water, it's in a good environment. And it's, there are no obstructions, there are no things that keep it, no blockades from keeping it from the things that it needs. We ask Allah, وَمِن شَرِّ غَاسِقٍ إِذَا وَقَبْ And this غَسَق and waqab, the barrier of dark, keeping you from what you, will, what you would otherwise have access to in the light of day. is just like that farmer who wants that there are no blockades, there are no obstacles in his path. And the obstacle for the human being clearly becomes the dark of the night. Then he says the third element is that if, what if you have too much water or too much sun? You get overwhelmed. And the plant, he specifically gave the example of the plant getting buried under snow or getting flooded with water, being overwhelmed from an outside element. I mentioned to you before, when people, their sorcery is done on them, they feel like they're being you know, uh, uh, suffocated from within. They feel like they are being pressured, or there's this heavy burden inside of them. That's the feeling of someone who's been, who's, who magic has been done on. And finally, he protects his garden and his plant from an enemy who wants to harm him. It's not just the elements, it's not just he wants to make sure he gets enough sunlight or whatever, not just the animals, but there's an actual enemy that wants to make sure his plant is destroyed. How does the surah address this enemy? وَمِن شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ 
ila hasad. So from every angle, just like that plant the gardener wants to protect, Allah Azza wa Jal wants to protect ourselves. And He wants us to seek protection for ourselves. So this surah is about protecting yourself from physical kinds of harm that may afflict you. The next surah will be about spiritual harms that can afflict you. So there's the body being protected in Surah Al-Falaq, and the, the ruh and the nafs being protected in Surah Al-Nas from waswasa of shaitan and evil company and things like that. The final comment inshallah ta'ala, the final two comments rather, uh, I'll, I'll mention the positive comment to you first. So jealousy is a really terrible thing except وَمِن ذَلِكَ مَا صَحَّ مِن قَوْلِهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ From the things that are acceptable as what is authentically narrated from the Prophet لَا حَسَدَ إِلَّا فِثْنَتَيْنِ There is no room for jealousy at all except in two things. رَجُلٌ أَتَاهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى مَالًا وَسَلَّطَهُ عَلَى هَلَكَتِهِ فِي الْحَقِّ A man who Allah has given wealth and he is exhausting himself in destroying it, spending it for the truth. He just wants to get rid of it all. And the words are really interesting. Fi halakatihi to destroy that I just I don't want to look at it. I want to give it all up. It's like he can't hold on to it. He wants to give it up for the sake of Allah. This attitude of giving. When somebody has that, you say, man, not just I'm not just jealous of his wealth. You know what I what you're jealous of there? His attitude. How does he have I'm, how do you get that? How do you want to give money up so so easily? Like it's hard for him to hold on to it, it's easy for him to give. What's the case with most of us? It's hard for us to give it, it's very easy to hold on. You know? Especially when it comes to fil haq, in the truth, spending in the path of the truth. It's very difficult. You know, uh, fundraising can be like pulling teeth. For you to like uh, uh, give a hundred dollars towards the building of a masjid or you know helping out the madrasa or whatever else, right? This da'wah program or this or that, it's very difficult. But when you go to Walmart, you don't think twice. Yeah, swipe the card, it doesn't hurt. You don't think, man, this money could have been better used for you know the, co- the kid's college fund or this. No accounting comes to your head. But when it comes to spending in the path of Allah, all of a sudden all of you become CPAs. Man, this money could have been, I need it over there, and this bill, and that bill, and the whole financial balance just rolls before your eyes. It's like you've logged into your online account just sitting there in front of the masjid, while the funders is going on, right? And you think all of the reasons why you should not be giving. But this person, we should be jealous of, who when the opportunity comes to give, he just, just let me get rid of it. It's like it's on fire when it's with him, and he just wants to get rid of it. This is the first person we should be jealous of. No, you know, some people don't understand this, and what do they do? Man, I wish I was wealthy like him. If I was, I would spend too. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> Just like the money part. You'd spend, but not like he spends. Right? So sometimes we have these, fa- you know, I really want to be rich so I can spend in the path of Allah. Yeah. You really mean that? <laughs> you know? Or do you mean I really want to be rich and yeah, I'll spend a little, I guess. Because I feel bad. I said that already. <laughs> right? Subhanallah, we can't play games with our intentions. And so this person, it's, it's someone to be jealous of, some, something to aspire. Then, وَرَجُلٌ أَتَاهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى الْحِكْمَةِ فَهُوَ يَقْضِي بِهَا That's the first. He says, a, a man who Allah has given wisdom, here we learn, just like mal comes from Allah, you don't earn mal, you also don't earn what? Wisdom, that also comes from Allah. And so what does he do with that wisdom? يَقْضِي بِهَا Number one, he judges by means of that wisdom. When he lives his life, he lives in according, accordance with that wisdom. So here we're learning the difference between knowledge and wisdom. You can have a lot of knowledge, but you don't act on it, which means you're not very wise. When you have knowledge, and you judge by it, you act by it, you live by it, you benefit from it, then you're actually wise. Knowing a lot is not difficult. You can memorize the entire Qur'an, thousands of hadith, you can learn Arabic, you can learn fiqh, tafsir, aqidah, you can learn all the ulum you want. You can become a alim. That's easy. That's not the hard part. The hard part is hikmah. Hikmah, the ancient Arabic definition of hikmah was you learn something beneficial and you act on it. If you do those things, then you are hakim. For example, fire burns. Simple knowledge, fire burns. If you still touch it anyway, you're not very wise. Wisdom would be you have beneficial knowledge and that leads you to proper action, you stay away from fire. So, so number one, أَتَاهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى الْحِكْمَةِ فَهُوَ يَقْضِي بِهَا And then the second, then the second, وَيُعَلِّمُهَا النَّاسِ He teaches the people with it. Allah gave him wisdom, and he uses it to teach the people. Here it's something else, Allah didn't say, uh, He teaches people knowledge. He says He teaches people what? Wisdom. He lives by it first, 
then he teaches people wisdom. This is a person to be jealous of. This is a person that not only lives by it, but instills in people the love of knowledge and the love of acting upon that knowledge. May Allah make us people of wisdom, and may Allah make us people who instill wisdom in others. Finally, I said there is two kinds of jealousies I wanted to bring to your attention. The most common kind of jealousy we, have, we suffer from within our own homes, within our extended families, within the Muslim community. It's so pathetic sometimes, subhanAllah, my God, they didn't make me president of the masjid, I'm going to make my own masjid. And then the people who are in the other, and this, I'm not, I don't know about the masjid, I don't want to know, okay? I'm just saying, I've been to enough masjids, <laughs> right? And then the one, they, they left and they made their own masjid, they say, oh my God, I can't believe they take our money. And they make their own masjid, you're jealous too. They're doing hasad, you're doing hasad to subhanAllah, get over it, it's the house of Allah, be happy. Whatever their intentions were. We have to, be, we have to stop being petty. We have to stop being petty. Is we stop be, start being petty in the things that we shouldn't be petty, we should be happy <laughs> in, the, in certain things. We shouldn't be judging people's intentions, but we do these kinds of things, unfortunately. There are, man, how many places in America, I, I know off the top of my head, three or four places where lawsuits are taking place between masajid, masjid suing each other. How ridiculous is that? They go on, we go on fundraisers in the middle of Ramadan asking people to give for the sake of Allah so we can build a house, the house for Allah. You know, who, whoever builds a house for Allah in this dunya, Allah will build him a house in paradise and the people give their money sincerely and you spend all that money on a lawsuit. Come on. We're not going to answer to Allah for that? SubhanAllah. We should, you know, this is a, this, it really hurts. It hurts when th things like this happen. And it's become commonplace. Wallahi, it's not the exception, it's become the rule. It's so scary that we reach that point. So we have to, jealousy is the root of it though. If we sincerely we just wanted to serve Allah, this would not be a problem. People's egos get tapped, you know? And this surah was about crushing your ego, seeking Allah's refuge. From, you know, get, getting rid of your ego. Qul a'udhu bi rabbin nas. You know when somebody gets angry, what you're supposed to remind them of, say a'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim right? You try doing that to a Muslim when he's angry. Brother, just say a'udhu billah. What do you mean? I'm shaitan? You know, that shows you how badly shaitan's got a hold on him. Don't say it, bro. I'm with you, man. <laughs> Subhanallah. This is the state we reach. But this this was the first kind of jealousy. The second kind of jealousy is those who don't believe. No matter how many problems we have on the inside, we are still miles better, miles better in what La ilaha illallah, what Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi Allah has given us. This gift that Allah has given us is still far better than anything else. No matter, as bad as we are, <laughs> as bad as we are, we are still leaps and bounds ahead and they are jealous. They are jealous. And so Allah Azza wa says, وَدَّ كَثِيرٌ مِّنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ There are many, many, not all, not all, but there are plenty from the people of the book. لَوْ يَرُدُّونَكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ إِيمَانِكُمْ كُفَّارًا They would wish to turn you back after you have iman, back into kuffar. Now, the ayah doesn't say they want you to become one of them. The ayah just says they want you to become what? Kuffar. They just don't want you to believe what you believe. They'd rather not have you in their religion either. They just don't want you to have Islam anymore. They can't stand it. They can't stand it. And then why, can't, why don't they want you to have Islam anymore? Allah says, حَسَدًا مِّنْ عِنْدِ أَنفُسِهِمْ This is maf'ul lahu in Arabic. It's called maf'ul lahu, maf'ul illa. مِنْ أَجْلِ حَسَدٍ أي. It is because of a jealousy that is deeply rooted inside of themselves. مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الْحَقِّ Even after the truth became absolutely clear to them. The truth became clear to them, they realized they have to change, and they didn't want to change, but they saw people that did change, and when you, when you didn't change, and you see all these people that did become better, it makes you look worse. So the only way to make you look better, is to make them do things that are worse than you. Right? So they really want you to become kuffar, so they, at least I'm not as bad as those guys over there. That's what they want. So there's, a, there's an entity that is there that will want this. There's not everybody, but there is always going to be such an entity. And why do they do it? حَسَدًا مِنْ عِنْدِي أَنفُسِهِمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الْحَقِّ Then what should our response be? And that's what I want to conclude with. What should our response be? When we hear things like that, the kuffar are out to get us. You know? We will dedicate websites on how they are plotting against us and speeches and how the kuffar are plotting and how this and that and the other and they're... Listen, take Allah's advice. Allah said they're jealous and they want to harm you, right? What do ma'anittum? They, they, you know, they, they, whatever harms you, they love, Allah says. 
قد بدت البغضاء من أفواهي وما تخفي صدورهم أكبر The animosity has come out of their mouths and what they're hiding in their hearts is even worse It's even worse Look at what they're saying on the, the blog posts on CNN about any article What are they saying about Muslims? That's what's coming out of their mouths Allah says what they have inside their hearts is worse than that Allah opened it up Right? But after all of that, what should you do? What should your response be? Allah didn't leave us without advice he says, "Fa'fu, wasfahu, hatta yati Allahu bi amrihi." Same ayah. You keep pardoning it. Fa'fu, pardon it. Let it go. You don't get angry at the barking of a dog. It doesn't make sense to bark back. It doesn't make sense. Let it slide. It's okay. Wasfahu. Turn the page. Pretend it didn't happen. Hatta yati Allahu bi amrihi until Allah comes with His decision. You keep doing your da'wah. You keep doing your part. Let them be jealous. Let them do what they're doing. Your response is not to get fired up. Your response is not to get overboiled. The Muslims today, unfortunately, are so reactionary. We are so reactionary. Wallahi, I, I, this is hurting me, so I'm gonna just say it. You know that recent incident with South Park and the, the cartoon and all of that? I can, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I can tell you this much. There were people sitting in the boardroom, in the producer's room, that said, this is gonna cause a problem. When we draw this and put it on the air, it's going to cause a problem. There are probably going to be some Muslims that burn tires in Lahore, or you know, set some shops on fire in, in Cairo. And there are going to be some pro protests and rallies all over the Muslim world. It's going to fire people up. There's going to be assassination threats, this and that and the other. And it's going to be on the front page, and it's going to be on the main news on CNN. And it's going to be on BBC, and it's going to be on Fox, and it's going to be on NBC. What do you think? Should we go for it? Yeah, the, the show's ratings are going down, let's do it. So they do it, anticipating that the Muslims are going to explode in anger. And guess what the Muslims do? Exactly what they planned. They've got us figured out like lab rats. Like lab rats. We do exactly what they planned. And what happened? This offensive show that they made, nobody's endorsing it, but this offensive show that they made, which would have had X number of hits, because of our response, what happened? A hundred million times more. They got their, their ratings went up and all of this stuff. Why? They got exactly, for them it's not about ideology. They don't hate the messenger of Allah. They just want to make some money. For them it's about ratings. It's capitalism, brother. We have to, you know, if you want to play the game, sue them. So for defam defamation. When they see a lawsuit, they become a little more respectful because it costs money. It's nothing else. It's not a battle of ideologies. It's not what it is. We have to understand the times in which we live and the games that are played with us. And, and by the way, as far as the Muslims are concerned, if we are offended by any insult hurled against, hurled against the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and we deeply are offended, we are, but we should be equally offended when Ibrahim Alayhi Salam is made fun of. When Isa alayhi salam is made fun of. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is made fun of. Family guy hasn't been doing that for years. The Simpsons don't do that all the time. And our, our youth still watch it. I say, yo, that was a funny clip, man. Let me forward it to all my friends. Let me put it up on my Facebook page. We endorse these programs that deliberately and openly make fun of Allah's messengers. And we say and to Allah, we say, لا نفرق بين أحد منهم. We don't make distinction between any one of them. If the dignity of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is important to us, so is the dignity of all the messengers, all of the prophets. Not to mention Allah. وللله العزة ولرسوله وللمؤمنين. So we can't have this half-baked attitude. We're really offended about this. South Park was making fun of Jesus from the first day. First day, they've been making fun of. Him. Nobody says anything. Nobody gets offended. Oh, that's a Christian problem. Isa alayhi salam is not honored in Quran. He's not one of our messengers. We have more claim to him. We follow more of his legacy than the people of the book. We have more claim to him. Musa alayhi salam is mentioned more in Quran than even anywhere else. More than even Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Rasulullah by name mentioned by name five times. Musa alayhi salam seventy passages in the Quran. These are not messengers that deserve honor and dignity. We have to have a cool, calculated response. I'm not saying we shouldn't have a response. We need to calm down first. Burning some poor guy's car down in Karachi is not going to help. And you're really angry that the messenger was you know, insulted and you burned his car. What, what, did he, what did he do to you, man? What did he ever do? You know, Breaking windows and things like that. What is this craziness? How is this showing love? 
I understand the Muslims are, and we are too. We are deeply offended. But we need to put our heads together and crush this thing, you know, at the, at, at, we, we can't do that. We can't make a plan like that until we're calmed down. Allah says, Fa'fu, wasfahu, literally, chill out. Calm down. Overlook it. Turn the page. Hatta ya'ti Allahu bi amrihi. Inna Allah ala kulli shay'in qadir. No doubt it is Allah who is upon everything in complete control. The final comment on this I want to share with you about the Hasidun, the people who have Hasid against us. Who is on our side? What do you have to worry about? People, Muslims, getting all power. Man, they have this many weapons, and they have these many agents, and they've got this, and they've got the other, and all this conspiracy theory. Who do you have on your side? قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ all the darkness on one side and the one who tears through the darkness and brings light to you on the other side. What do you have to worry about? We have to hold on to this book and seriously believe in it. When it gives us counsel, we have to take it as counsel for us. We can't just take it as empty, you know, just a dars and some, some interesting knowledge, but go back to our attitude. This is supposed to change our attitudes. It's supposed to change our attitudes. I pray that Allah Azza wa gives all of us the strength to change our attitudes. May Allah make us unified with the Qur'an. May Allah give us a, a, a comprehensive understanding of it. I just want to make two announcements before I go. Those of you that want to catch a hold of the rest of the series, we began from Surah Al-Naba. It's on our website, bayina.com slash podcast. It's the, all the MP3s are free and they're available. And even the recording of this session will be on there, inshallah ta'ala. Additionally, uh, this week, alhamdulillah, I'll be done uh, next week, inshallah, in Irving with Surah Al-Nas. I hope I'll be done with Surah Al-Nas next week. Uh, but at the same time, my colleague, uh, Sheikh Abdul Nasser, that pretty much all of you, I think, know, started the study of Juz Tabarak today. And he started it in Kaliville. And those podcasts will be placed online also. So I'm taking about a month break, inshallah ta'ala, after, after Nas is done. And I'll, con I'll reconvene from the 28th juz. But he'll be starting tabarak immediately. So you can get a hold of those surahs as well, inshallah ta'ala. This is the first number. The second announcement is May the 16th. There's a qalam program. I know you've, many of you have attended qalam programs before. That's May the 16th in the Kaliville Masjid from 2 to 7 o'clock. It's Quran, or, or family in the Quran. So inshallah ta'ala, bring, you, bring yourselves and your family from 2, and, 2 to 7 on May the 16th. At the Kali Bil Masjid. Barakallahu li walakum fil Quran al Hakim, wanafani wa iyakum bil ayati wa tikil hakim wa salamu